Joe presents Liquid Football, sponsored by Paddy Power. Hello, welcome to Liquid Football on Joe. Together with Paddy Power, it's the show that takes you inside the dressing room and puts you in the boots of the players. With us this week, a couple of regulars in John Walters and in Wayne Bridge, and we're joined by former Manchester United and England defender Wes Brown. So Thanks Wes, well. how has your week been coming into here? Yeah, it's been good. Um, I've really enjoyed what we did before. Yes. And I'm sure to be revealed later, later on. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, it's been good. I'm looking forward to this bit. Um, Others might have enjoyed it. More. I enjoyed it. <laughs> 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 you know that? A for effort, A for effort. I think, I think you're still looking a little bit like windswept Wet. and d- yeah. damp. As, yeah, and, and, and obviously John's decorated. Yeah, He's frosted just himself. Match my top. You know, <laughs> don't judge my feminine side, Kelly. No, I'm not. I'm not judging uh, you it You know, at all. part of the challenge. I thought I'd go for it. So, I think uh, it's important. Also, be revealed in a that, little bit. Yeah, it's always nice when you turn up home. <laughs> <laughs> You've been to work. You come back. Yeah. Do you want to explain? No, there's no point explaining. There's no point. It will be explained a little bit later on. Um, this weekend. There was the, we're going to call it a row for the sake of starting the conversation between Mane and we think Mohamed Salah, where Mane thought that Salah should have passed to him a couple of times, came off, was substituted and was sort of giving all this on the bench. We were there, John, at at the game and Mane was clearly unhappy. The club have said, look, it's fine, but it's it's just that that sort of relationship between players and and that kind of shouting at each other it on, goes on, the pitch. on it goes on in matches all the time um Salah obviously wants the the golden boot or whatever again top scorer I think they were joint last year yeah so he's obviously he's on penalties He'd like to as be well on his own. <laughs> man he man just doesn't get past it was three times in a match uh and and he's got taken off and he's scored a goal got taken off and he's having to go at Van Dyke he's having to go at Henderson basically to tell them have a word with Salah maybe and then then Firmino joins in the tunnel. You've all seen the video of him coming through, and it's. Uh, I'm sure it's all forgotten, but it goes on. It goes on in matches, and I think what people tend to forget, football's like n- no other job. I think. I think you can go and I mean you could have a blazing row on a pitch, and then it's forgotten about afterwards. Some people hold it a little bit, but uh, yeah, I think it's forgotten about. When you mentioned the golden golden boot, you don't think it's going through his head already this season 100%. that he's not giving it to him because he doesn't want him yeah. to get the golden boot. <laughs> oh, if that was, then that is disgraceful. But you know, watching it back, I think anyone who watches back, he's got to pass it. You can understand his frustration, but I don't think after the game in the change room, much has been said. Maybe a little bit has been said, but I think they've just forgotten about it. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's I've seen it happen a few times. I think it's probably happened in more games than people have realised as well. Maybe at certain points of the game, and it feels like you maybe should have passed it. But listen, Salah's on my fantasy in Premier League. <laughs> fantasy, <laughs> so, so he can be, he well, be so as greedy right. as he wants. Uh, but yeah, listen, it's just a bit of frustration. And like you said, three times in a game, it's he's, he's, he's got to him a little bit and he's probably shown a little bit too emotion. But I'm sure Salah, um, he would have seen that. And I'm guessing next time he'll pass it. But it is one of them. I mean, Liverpool are playing so well at the moment and, you know, them three up top are brilliant. But I think Mane probably thinks a few times he, he should have just been been released in. Yeah, the third shot. It's something brewing, isn't it? It's something brewing, I think, because it goes back to last year and I watch, I watch Mane in the game and every time he wasn't passing, he was throwing his hands up a little bit. And I watched it last year. He was doing a similar thing, but Salah doesn't so pass. Some, like there's Salah doesn't pass. Four times. Exactly. His yeah. assist but record and his sort of key passes record is actually well. He got an assist yeah. from really Firmino's goal, but, yeah. the <laughs> shot the other it. <laughs> but it's like you go in a change room and Jurgen Klopp had a little that's all sorted. But certain change rooms will, will have different dynamics. Um, like when I first went to Stoke, Tony Pulis didn't really get involved, all the lads just sorted it out on, in the change room because we had a good group of lads. Everyone had the same mentality. But then when Mark Hughes came in, he didn't really say anything. So something happened on the pitch and you get a point with it was like Stephen and Zonzi kept throwing his hands up at all the players if they didn't pass for him or some, something going on in the match and he kept doing it. And all the lads were sort of losing their head but no one really said anything, got to the point and then I think I came in and I had a big go at him and then it was just all in between us, everyone. But I forget about it straight away but you'd expect the manager to back you up on that because what he's doing is wrong. And some managers won't say anything. He didn't say anything. So it got to the point in Stoke where a bit of the discipline went. Um, not just on the pitch, it was off it as well. We had lads. <laughs> there was a lad, we went on pre-season to Florida and a lad brought his, his, his wife to the hotel. To in pre-season? pre-season. I got, and we pulled the assistant manager and said, I ain't got a minute, just have a word here. Like, what, what, what the fuck's so going how, on, basically? Yeah. And uh, nothing got said to him, as long as he's happy. So that... It, so, but, but his wife can't. Have, I mean, that can't be much fun for his wife either. Like, to well, she's 
Joe Secondi and she yeah. saw who was there. <laughs> well, maybe she didn't know. know. Maybe yeah, she didn't mad. know. No, 100%, nobody else no, was no, bringing anyone. It was a bit of a strange one. Yeah. And who the lads are just like, Eric Peters. Oh, right. And the lads are just like, oh, what's going on here? Like, it's a joke. Like, you, she was around the pool and lads finished training. Like, what? I'd that, feel awkward. Unbelievable. Yeah, well, you wouldn't do it, but, but it got, no. that's what I mean. It got to the point where the staff wouldn't say anything to the players and would let them do it rather than. Rather than if there's an argument in a in a change room and and the players right, you need to back that up a little bit. So as I said, different different change rooms have different dynamics. Like uh, you know sure from he United, he, he must have felt he, he got he could get away with it though. That's yeah, because I mean, all through is, the season things were like gradually getting away with things through, yeah, during that, the season. That's where the manager's got to say something. Imagine five of the lads doing that. Yeah. Four of the lads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be turning into a hot. Uh, <laughs> that's what we so, 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 couldn't have done like, it on the old school tours where you had to share rooms. No, yeah, so <laughs> that's just like, like a, at Stoke, so two different managers had two different ways of doing it. Yeah. Um, but then, like you, you boys are in the in the big clubs in the in the, in the dressing rooms, what's it like there? Who like no, you were United from a young lad, weren't you? So yeah, who's I mean, running it there? First of all, it'd be the manager. Then obviously, I mean. You've got some big guns. Roy Keane is the manager on the pitch. He's, if something's going wrong in training, he's the one who, who will have a go at you. Not necessarily the manager. After that, you've got Giggsy, Gaz, Rio. You know, so all through my uh, Man United playing career, there was always someone. If they felt you were getting a little bit out of line, even if it was something silly, they'd just have a quick word. It just reminds you of how we got to where we was. And I don't get, think some teams have that though. He gets dealt with the players first. I said yeah, the bigger clubs does. definitely. I think the argument. manager steps in right at the end if he needs to. Yeah. So like everyone should shut up. Yeah, and like if say if it's kicking off in training or anything, it just split. It makes sure the players that are kicking off are on the same team yeah. and things like that. There's, yeah. so. there's fights in training as well, isn't there? Like you, you, there's, a, there's always little things going on in training where what one player's not playing maybe, and he's like two footing people all over the pitch and things like that go on. So there's, there's fights in training. And I remember a young lad. I was coming through at Bolton, and um, we had a Turkish guy hacking bullet and it was Bernard Mendy, a French guy, and there was a fight going on, and it was that bad. I think Phil Brown had to drag Bernard Mendy in to the... Um, it was port cabins at the time, into the port cabins, and then next thing, we've all gone into into the uh, into the dressing room to get changed. Uh, manager's office is not far. Hacking Bullen still lost his head. Fly kicks the door open of the manager's office, and then just carries on. <laughs> so it's like, goes on in training, but then like the next week it's forgotten about... Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's, it's one you, of those things you that talk happens. about the other players, and you mentioned um, the Bobby Firmino. Is he is there coming up the tunnel, and he sort of turns to camera and goes <laughs> as though he's thinking it's the best thing in the world. Like that, you must. That, there must be a bit of you that quite enjoys it when it's kicking off between other players. I, I would. It's like being at school when someone else gets told off, and you just sit there going, oh, this got "I just think it's immediately after. No, as soon as it's finished, yeah. you have a good giggle don't you it's like, did you see him then wow yeah. <laughs> um, but when it's happening you just sort of want to saw it out especially when it's on camera and everyone's watching it um, but listen that's just frustration there from Mane he wants the ball and yeah I'm not, I don't know whether they speak Like as you'll know not everyone's necessarily cl- close friends outside of football so you don't know whether they speak all the time you don't know So, but he's just laying a bit of frustration out. I don't think there's anything bad in it I've seen worse stuff is it, is it actually important like rather than being bad for the team if, if it's done and you get it out the way and then you move on from it is it actually important that it's been said that it's out in the open and that that you've cleared the air i think you get you get you make <laughs> they're all looking at me they can't like, make any difference we're gonna you say get it anyway on, you, you have to get on you get on because you're a team but mm. i think if if there is a relationship that's bad that's when the manager has to step in i think yeah. definitely like i've my relationship of what well, we couldn't really call it relationship with mario bellatelli when i was there i just didn't like him very much at all I um, thought his attitude stunk but Man City let him get away with it every time and that gave me the um, people thought it was funny some players and thought it was funny but I just didn't like it he'd turn up late for training he'd um, he wouldn't like rush in and rush he'd just bowl over on his phone still like sorry I'm late and then walk in get changed and stroll out when he wants and I ended up having an argument with him well not an argument he basically smashed me I ended up smashing him back and then he like elbowed me across the face and then I was running around the pitch running after him basically so in the end we had that to stop it and could put you us not on. catch him? I couldn't catch him he's quite quick he had a five yard head start <laughs> um, and we got put on the same team and then it went into the dressing rooms and things were said and it carried on but I kind of washed my hands of him because of what had happened and the way his attitude was but I I never ever it never caused a problem for anyone else. After that day I just never really gave him much attention. You know, if 
if I was going to part, if we were in a game and he was there to be passed, I'd pass him the ball. But I don't think it would ever affect the team. Yeah. I don't think people. I think that's something that people don't understand. They see particularly successful teams. They look at them and they think everybody's got to be mates. And there probably is something in the fact that if you're successful together, there's a there's a there's a bond there. Yeah, I just think listen, you're mates professionally, and you're there to do the same for the same goal really, and that's to win to win trophies. And I think everyone that probably came to Man United understood that. And if they didn't, they got told quickly. I mean, if training wasn't 100%, someone would tell you, or you wouldn't perform too well. And then that might, you know, the gaffer might not pick you then for the weekend. But in general, um, everyone knew what they were there to do. And if they didn't, they'd learn quickly just by watching everyone else what they were doing. Um, just in case anyone's listening on the, on the podcast and can't see, John is just pouring something out of a teapot into a cup. You've not just kind of... <laughs> Wandered I've off. Brought my own to teapot today. <laughs> you have brought your own teapot for a reason. When I first joined the Ireland team, Trapattoni was a manager, and he banned like drinking or anything like that because you know ev- because you're it, athletes. Because we're athletes, <laughs> but you know everyone likes a good time. When you first point. meet up, you have a drink, but you like yeah. you cut it out like no one doing this. And we had some big big players in there, like the Robbie Keane, Richard Dunn, Damien Duff, and some older players coming to the end of the end of the international careers and. Uh, and a way to get round the, the drinking ban, we always used to sit in reception. And uh, so we'd come in and we and there was a the guy called Guido that used to look after all the players at the hotel, an Italian guy as well. So we say, Guido, do us a favour, just put a, put a pint of Guinness in a, in a teapot <laughs> or coffee pot. And uh, so there we are in reception, full of all families and everyone all around. And Trapattoni's walking past with Marco Tardelli, just giving us a wave, right, boys? Thinking we're just having a coffee, being sensible. There's no drinking in the Tipping camp. Sugar and Not going to lie, I wish you had told me that a few years <laughs> yeah. ago. And, we, and, we, and we're there in reception with teapots and coffee pots. That was our secret way of disguising. And you, until now, no one knew that. No one knew we used to do that either. You must, but you must have had quite creative ways to get round the sort of stricter managers, things like, I mean, maybe you didn't have the teapot trick, but you must have had, had other ones. I'm going to say no. Oh, and it's, nah. You were so well I behaved. Think, yeah, I mean, do you know what? You, it's, it's, I don't want to sound bad, but... <laughs> the, best, the best thing about that, particularly if you're listening on the podcast, is John's face. Where he's like, <laughs> oh, what I did. Mean, what do you mean you stuck I to did. all the rules? No, no, no. I would say during the season, I think, you probably well behaved if you're at a bigger team as well and you're playing two games a week you don't get the chance to really go out when you're playing twice a week I'd say pre-season is probably the time if anything I've probably snuck out when I shouldn't it's because you're coming off the back of a holiday I know it's Mm. but pre-season sometimes some managers take it like we'll have a get together have a night out but we're training as well it's always dangerous when you get a drink though yeah it it is dangerous I think one sticks out for me actually was one of my last clubs was at Brighton and uh, Gus Poyer and uh, we had the afternoon off so we can go down to a beach but I just lost a £500 bet with one of the players so he said no we don't have Casually, the money hang on what were yeah. you having a £500 bet over it was an ice bath but he had to stay under <laughs> the water for a minute and I can't, I can't even stay in it for a minute you, but he stayed is this, under is this, is, this, is this because pre-season's boring is this what this pretty is? much yeah. um, so we end up he doesn't let he doesn't let me pay him. He says, We'll put a bet on a horse instead, so you haven't just chucked your money away. So we find a horse and there's a physio that used to work and he was my best mate and his name was Luke Hampton. So there was a horse called Bridge Hampton. So I would just shove it on that, it was five <laughs> to one, not thinking he's gonna come in it, come in. So on the way to the beach we're jumping and cheering, we got overexcited, just got absolutely hammered on the beach. <laughs> And uh, I don't actually remember the coach journey back to the <laughs> hotel, actually. But then, was anything said? Did anybody notice? I mean, um, they must have noticed. I must have kept myself composed enough for Gus not to say anything and made it back to my room, all right, and made it to training, which is probably the most important thing. Uh, Do you think there was a lot carnage. of that, though? Like, it's managers, de- turn, when, when it wasn't going to be harmful, like, deliberately turning a blind eye to Listen, stuff? when I was playing international as well, we were, um, it's different in the England set I'm sure, but we were, I've said, Trapattoni used to ban it, so the lads were like, Going out of fire exits out of windows at night to, to, to uh, night out, but everyone, everyone was together. Everyone was uh. doing it. Everyone was so close. So we'd all have a night out, and I was, <laughs> we'd go to say a nightclub, and they'd know their own of the club. So um, we used to have the basement locked off. So it was just the lads. There was no one else in there. So you used to have like say Shane Long on a guitar or lads just having a having a laugh, and it was literally just us. So we weren't like causing any trouble with anyone else. You still have lads trying to come in disguise and wear a, a flat cap, 
if I like, cap on a night out. <laughs> and it used Glasses to be like with a little moustache attached. Used to be like, they're shake given in a black cap. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> on a night out in the middle of a nightclub that you had to go through to get to the basement sort of thing, but it's so always when dangerous. You say you snuck out a window. Yeah. Look, what not I mean we're not on the ground floor or anything here. So how do you how do you sneak out a window? There's different ways. You have windows, <laughs> balconies, ways down. A, lads would always find a way and they'd sneak they'd go through reception in the tracksuits and no one'll know no one know what you're doing, but underneath the tracksuit you'd have all your you have all your gear on. That's quite well known that we used to do that, but then but it was good because we had such a good team spirit, everyone was doing it. Um but it can get it can get messy. Um if there's no sort of rules like pre-season trips or mid-season breaks, we used to go to Dubai with Stoke, and it was different managers. Was like Sam Allardyce was one who used to always let them have a night out every yeah. single night. I think didn't if he? you're allowed out hmm. or let out, you don't really. <laughs> if you let out, you don't want anything to happen, so you let out again. Yeah, and then obviously if you're not let out, you're kind of like, well, I'm going to go out. Yeah, I think the, yeah. man- the managers are clued up enough to think, right, we'll let them have a little social evening, and then that's it. That's it for the trip. There's one to Dubai, right? So we went to Dubai with Stoke. I'm not going to name the player because he's still playing. So player X. And <laughs> <laughs> this is a case of like, if, you, if you're given a night out, don't let any trouble happen because you don't want it to come back. So we went out, we were in a club, went back, and uh, this, this guy was like notorious for it. He was completely gone. And um, we all went back to the hotel. It's two o'clock in the morning, I'm in bed. My phone starts ringing, and it's this lad. And uh, he was a bit lively in the, in the club. <laughs> think oh no please don't ring me so I've just ignored it a voicemail comes through and he can't just slur and doesn't make any sense whatsoever so then he's banging down the corridor and I'm just I just ignore it so he's looking for me for some reason <laughs> don't know what I did to him <laughs> but he's looking for me and uh I go back to sleep don't hear anything of it in the morning down at breakfast Charlie Adam comes to me and says listen um you need to go up to my room I think this guy could be dead on the floor in my room. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh no, please, no. <laughs> like, what's going on? Like, I know he's looking for me. So I'm with I'm the fitness guy, Damien Roden. So I'm within. So we go up to Charlie's room and he's gone. The lad's gone. So, like, go in Charlie's room, patio door, his balcony is smashed in. <gasps> Hotel manager walks in at the same time. It's like, go mad, what's going on? So Charlie says, three o'clock in the morning, this lad's come through his patio door with his head. <gasps> fell over, knocked himself out on the side table, <sighs> thought he was dead on the floor, took his heart rate, not like that, honestly. Yeah. He said, well, took his room key, went to stay in his room. But this lad left still him there. Left him there. This lad's still on the floor. Oh. Come back in the morning, time for breakfast told us, and we can't find him anywhere. So the hotel manager's going mad, and I'm, the manager can't find out this has happened, so... I mean, at no stage is anybody thinking, maybe we should yeah, call the doctor. Yeah, we're trying to ring the doctor. When, 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 when he was on the floor, he checked, he had a pulse and was breathing, it was okay. Oh, well, then that's all right, then. So left this, just thought, thought, like, he knocked himself out, he's pissed, he's on the floor, gone. Yeah. And Charlie trying, qualified as a doctor when? We're trying, to ring, we're trying to ring him, this lad, can't get hold of him. So hotel manager's going mad, patio door, everyone's, com- people are complaining in the hotel, so we've gone, look, <laughs> no. right, we'll sort it, Can, we'll pay for a patio door, I think it was about, like, 1000 1500 for a patio door. I've paid for it, we said, listen, as long as the, the, the football manager doesn't find out, <laughs> as long as the market <laughs> doesn't think, find yeah. out, yeah. Right, we'll sort it, so we sorted it, found them later on in the day, not a scratch on him, not a mark on his head, anything like that. Didn't even say thank you, and I think he still owes me the money for the patio <laughs> door. But the manager didn't find out, so we got another night out. Another That's night. a really interesting insight into your priorities there, I think. <laughs> well, it's just looking after the team, isn't it? You, you always make sure nothing goes wrong. It, you must be, the, you're listening to this, and you look, you're, you're supposed being brought up in such a strict environment at Manchester United. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a different, no, different mentality, isn't it? season you get that one night out. I don't know what it was like. Yeah. It was like Chelsea, Chelsea, like people they used to throw a party. What, face planting through yeah, the patio. I mean, that's, yeah. that's a different level. <laughs> that was different. I'll tell you who it is later. <laughs> that's a different level. Got, because he's... A, he's, still, he's still a player now. You've had a little sip of Guinness. So I think if we get a little bit more down, you no. might tell it. But if he's still playing, then we can't push it too hard because it's not fair. So you know what you're saying. But you're still allowed out though, aren't you? Of course you do. But the manager was always funny. He would always say... 
you can go and do whatever you want. You, I saw it, you don't need to be st- too stupid, but training is going to be the hardest session that we'll have. And it always was. The next day, I don't know what yous were like. <laughs> yeah, You'd always. Be, and everyone would have to, people try not to get up. And, I yeah. don't think John would have gone. We'd have to drag people yeah, yeah, out of bed to, to make train, but yeah, training, but yeah. training wasn't like the hard training was funny. No, people fall over. So we'd be doing like, I was was once in Dubai when we was there, and we were doing 200 the next morning, like six, two lots of eights. And you were nearly throwing up everything, but it just made people be a bit wary and yeah. um, what you did the night before. I mean, we, everyone still went out and had a good time, but you know, you knew the next day. You it's were if like, you well, can't train, I think it's, that's when you got yeah. a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Red one, Mark Crosley, um, the goalkeeper, was at Fulham on loan, went to Dubai, and we come in from the night out, and he's been and led down by the pool. And, oh, I'm going to bed. Even oh, I'm just going to chill out here for have one more beer. And he fell asleep. He put his put his iPad in it on his chest and fell asleep I went down there about 10 o'clock the next morning and he still led there and he had blistered <laughs> all over his body and just had the patch of the eye on his, on his chest and he couldn't train because he had blistered so bad oh and he couldn't God. train it was so painful yeah it was just, it blistered really really bad like he needed proper treatment mm. you say that about managers saying long you train the next day mm. have a good night don't know trouble Roy Keane at Ipswich we had a night out and everyone got <laughs> back on time. Everyone got back on time. No trouble whatsoever. Yeah. Pulled us the next day. Absolutely hammered us. None of you have got anything about you. None of you got arrested. None of you had a fight. <laughs> None of you did <laughs> anything. Yeah, exactly. We were like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you meant to do? Yeah. Some managers you know I mean? so, can't, yeah. please. No. No, they want everybody to get... They want everybody <laughs> to have a good time. Um, apparently, we, this did start by talking about Liverpool's front three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, apparently, Mo Salah with Paddy Power, 9-2 to finish top scorer. Mane is 10-1 to to finish top scorer. Given that they, were, they, they both had a share of the golden boot last season, are you surprised that that's as... As different as it Salah's is. Salah's on penalties, isn't he? Yep. There you go. And that's why. Yeah. Mm. I'm surprised because Mo Salah's probably going to get told to pass a little bit more. So yeah. man, it's going to be highlighted a bit more now. Every time it's <laughs> like a 50 50 to pass it, I think yeah. he's going to be passing yeah. for It's going to get highlighted weeks, yeah. a lot. Will, do you think he will be, or will that be something that's sorted out between the players? I think I'll get highlighted from now on, it will. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, Manny might have done it on But purpose. might it take something out of. Salah's game if he's constantly thinking about he likes to think he's big enough to deal with it he knows how to deal with that yeah he'll be fine he's you know he's he's a fantastic player but at the same time he'll want that top spot this year but if he makes it if it's too obvious and it's somewhere where you're going if he passes that he's in or it's it's a tap in he's going to get brought up every time I like the fact that they're they're free new up and like See, that's the point. Wanting he's to get he's more moaning goals, coming off the sun because yeah. he wants another he knows there's a he goal wants, in the game we were there he knows there's a goal in the game yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. you got that's to love right. that uh, it is the moment you've all been waiting for the reason why John's got his fingernails <laughs> painted the reason why Wayne is still looking a little bit damp and a little bit frazzled <laughs> around the edges it's time for the Paddy Power Challenge uh, one of you has the chance to win £250 for the charity of your choice courtesy of Paddy Power um, you won last week 42 yeah. oh, headers no. in the header challenge Wayne you put £250 well, on Norwich to beat yeah. West Ham we've still not had a winning bet yet no. still not had a winning bet so this week we challenge the guys to come up with their own goal gifts. Three, two, one, action. Get in. <laughs> this week's Paddy Power Challenge is all about goal gifts. We're going to film some goal gifts and the best ones are going to get tweeted out. The person with the most likes wins. Let's go, boys. Let's do it. Point right. My nails are still wet. I don't. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> top off or top on? Uh, oh my god. <laughs> 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 well, that's not full size. How do you do that? It's not going to fit around my head. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> no, I've got to pull these out the right way so I've got the, uh, in the old space. If you do gun thing, I'm doing that. Okay, we'll try it. Can I give the camera a little one of them first? You would hate it down, wouldn't you? Oh, fuck. Well, so far we've had Wes Brown dressed up as a cowboy. And just to make sure we go with this whole village people vibe, We've now got John in his pants. He's been on holiday, so he's got a tan. Nobody wants to check if it's all over yet, but when you come into work and John Walters is in pants and a pig head, you know something's gone wrong somewhere. One take, yeah. 
Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. Here we go, dentist chair. Hopefully, lads, don't stitch me up. Come on! Get in! <laughs> John's up next. God knows what he's going to do here. I'll tell you what, you spend 20 years trying to build a career and this is how you end up. John's going to do another one. <laughs> Obviously, for the for the podcast, you can go and, and look at these gifts. Obviously, it's a visual thing on YouTube or on, across Joe's various social media platforms. Yeah, it's come from James Norwood at Ipswich doing the uh, Steve Stone double can in the face. Yeah, and uh, what and has Wayne? That's where, no Wayne's came from. Gaza's no, the dentist goal gifts. Chair. The goal gifts have come. Yeah, from but that, Bristol City mm -hmm. started it. They were the first ones with it. They did, but. Um, is it Bobby Reid who had the fire hydrant? It's, it's and just come of, yeah. to the forefront, hasn't it, now? Yeah, because there's a few boring Everyone ones. There's a few now. boring goal gifts, yeah. isn't there? But now uh, I think Ipswich took it to that I next think level. It, I think at Bristol City it became really competitive. That they kept they would do what you did, which is bring in all your own props and have all kinds of... <laughs> there were full well, the productions. Bro the Brock retweeted it, didn't he? James Norwood, he did the oh, elbow drop of the Rock. That's right. the Rock yeah, had a thing yeah, yeah. it, didn't he? Because he did the, uh, the people's elbow. Yeah. yeah, that's when it... That's when it all took off. You're right. It did. It did take, go into another level. But you won't level. beat ours now. I dare a player to beat any of our three now. <laughs> <laughs> if we, right. They are all available uh, on YouTube and on social media across all the Joe platforms. So if you do want to vote for them, you can. And then we'll have a winner next week. Is that all right? You happy to wait a week? All good. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> talking, of, <laughs> talking of your disallowed goal gif brings us very neatly to the Jack Grealish dive. Jermaine Gina said the worst decision he'd ever seen I don't in the Premier League. the worst League. one you've ever seen, is it? I think that was just for... I think it's the fact that it led to a goal. I think it was, that. That. it was that for the TV, wasn't it? The worst. You've got you to exaggerate. <laughs> That, it wasn't the worst one. You could have told me that one. before we worked together on Saturday. <laughs> it, wasn't, yeah, it, wasn't, it wasn't the worst one. Just exaggerating one. it for the mm -hmm. telly. Like, it was because VAR's come in now, isn't it? And they just ru like, they ruined everything. Everyone's moaning about it. Just let the game go. It's, it's, it's boring. Just like, What's VAR for? To check an error like that. Like They're saying about, oh, well, he blew his whistle first. And they're the rules. You've got to stick to the rules. What happens, well, though, if he doesn't blow his whistle? Well, it's boring. It's still and he, boring, and, though, and isn't it? Yeah, but and he scores. Yeah. Does he pull it back for the dive? Or does he let no, the goal I don't think go? anyone knows. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think That's anyone knows. <laughs> so just let it go. And if there's an error, if everyone's moaning, if there's a, an obvious penalty, an obvious goal, then just go over to your little TV and check. <laughs> but they're trying <laughs> not to. But they try not to do that. They well, try not that to go over to the TV. That was obvious. You could yeah. tell all the players <laughs> surrounded the ref. But yeah. also, if he's blown his whistle, that's it. Anything that's after the ref blows his whistle you know what? doesn't count. But it doesn't. That's just, just how it is. That's why they've been told to delay the decision. Shocking referees, isn't that? Just some. I, I personally, it was a Kevin French shock and referees. VAR because they they want it to for it to you know for there to be justice. But if, unless you're going to use it in every scenario, I don't not, see the that's point. That's not the system failing. That's the ref getting it wrong. Yeah, the ref it? Getting he's blown too early, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. when it you know when but it's they look common at it, sense, it doesn't isn't make any common difference. Common sense. There's a problem. Go yeah. and check your little screen. Check check why you've made the problem. Give the goal. Simple mm. as that. I just think refs or the rules or Mike Riley, whoever's making the rules up, just. No, it's, it's it, just, but the rules are yeah. IFAB, aren't they? That's it's not the Premier League aren't making the rules up. The Premier just, League are interpreting just, some rules though and changing, like the handball one. Aren't the they? handball, so just, they're, they're just, they're, but they're adjusting it slightly. They're, that's more on the advice they give to referees rather than before, the laws. Though, I mean, and we have we? to say laws instead of rules, or people get upset. Yeah, we've well. said this before though. Just yeah. leave the game alone. Just like there's some bad referees, yeah. isn't there? Anyway. There's a couple of good ones we yeah. used to get on with <laughs> in a match, but there's some bad ones. It's like the referees are the kids that were. That were poor at football, and then he went into refereeing for me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> poor, kid, poor, he went into refereeing. <laughs> Are you, no, to be there's fair, a, though, I liked a couple of refs. I liked, I liked the couple. I liked, I liked Clattenberg. Yep. Michael Oliver. Yeah. Um, Did Mark you like Halsey. them because you thought they were the best, or because they're the ones that you could have a conversation, you could have a conversation with, and they were reasonable? With, and they give you a bit of stick back. Mm. And Mike Dean, Mike Dean's from the world. I, I quite, I got on with him quite mm. well. Um, but some of them were just like completely ignore you, completely like teacher, like policeman sort of attitude where 
you know, that's what that's you where the, the, the higher than you. But just have a conversation, speak normally, give a little bit back, have a bit on the pitch, and everyone gets on better. Is, is that the difference? How they talk to you? Hundred oh, percent, yeah. especially when you all worked up and if something's gone against you, especially, um, just you know, have a bit of banter back, and it sort of calms you down. And um, when the refs like do one, go like even swear back in the day you yeah. say go on fuck off yeah over there you, you, you get frustrated with it because you're not allowed to do it to them but they might do it to you or they fob you off the go, best refs are the ones that speak to you yeah, and have a bit have a, bit, have, have, have a little bit back at you yeah like there was the, oh God, I'm trying to, Martin Atkinson actually used to be like oh had a beast there didn't you what about that one or I think when I scored yeah, a couple <laughs> of own goals when I scored the two own goals yeah. the ref was Ooh. wherever the ref was was hammering me was like <laughs> Oh, oh, cheers, mate. Yeah, I was yeah. gone then. I was gone. <laughs> I was You're going never on. coming back from that. But Even I didn't the rest mind it. I didn't mind it because, <laughs> yeah. like, I used to not hammer them by. I used to have a little joke with them as well. Like, you're having a beast here. Like, you're having yeah. a nightmare. But Wasn't it was Mark good. Clattenburg who said to. Uh, was it Adam Lalala? Oh, you've you've changed since you moved from Southampton. Was that was that Mark Clattenburg <laughs> I, who said that? I don't that mind as that well? because Lalana would have been hammering them now the whole game. But then Clattenburg's not the best. That was Andre Mariner. Andre Mariner. Andre Mariner who said yeah, it, not okay. Mark Clattenburg. Mark Clattenburg's the one who's got tattoos, the tattoos of his of where, big games. He's done. Yeah, and things like that. Mm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what's the what's the worst what's the worst um decision that you've ever been, oh, I've been in on a the end of? I've been in a couple. One got sent off against you lot. It was a great decision, Charlie, that, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Mariner. Which clearly shows I didn't touch him. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and then the other funny one was when I got sent off at Man United, and it was actually John O'Shea that brought him oh, down. Now, yes. If I look like John O'Shea, he's my mate. Like John's my mate, but if I look like him, I sort of <laughs> you're struggling there, aren't you? you? Yeah, it's like I'm like, are you sure, ref? Because that it's a complete error. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. they're just two, and it, it, to be fair, it was pretty funny. It wasn't, it wasn't funny afterwards. It was funny. Yeah, yeah. Just the fact that I mean, we're standing next to each other, <laughs> but he's standing eight yards from us how how he sees it's general share did he ever, who was the referee that day <sighs> I knew he was going to say it I'm not I sure know, but I'll tell you what he did say though because when when I was like it wasn't me it was John and John goes yeah, it was like me but he's already sent me off so uh, he couldn't change it he so he's going well you, you walk off with I said I don't think that's the rule <laughs> <laughs> I, don't think that's the, I don't think you can do that and he's going right well you're going to have to go off there <laughs> I mean, it kills us. The thing, though, <laughs> the, 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 the people... The people <laughs> so you're all standing in the middle of the pitch, going, yeah, with, and you've going, said you've sent off the wrong person, what, who, what do goes, we do well, now? And he then knows like, it's well, the wrong person, but he can't, well, he can't actually change can't his change mind. It, but so. then you have the that, referees that, 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 are assessed. There's no common sense in that. You've got to be able to. You know what I mean? He's got to bring him back on. You've got to be able to. The referees assessors, though, after the game, they never, ever say, oh, yeah, I've got that mistake. They always say, oh, yeah, they always go, that's what annoys, I think, player, or even fans, that's what annoys everyone. I'm fairly sure in that instance they, they did come out and say No, they probably yeah, said well <laughs> you look like John <laughs> yeah. but they probably didn't yeah. apologise to you you didn't get an apology did John's you John's got ginger there there you go <laughs> but football and rugby refs are a bit different aren't they? Yeah. a few times in football isn't it sending the wrong person off yeah. it happened at uh, Arsenal I think as well yeah mm. I think it did mm. I think it did Rod- yeah it was Roger East who yeah, sent, who sent you off out. instead yeah. of John no O'Shea comment. There you go. That's, uh, good research. That's there. what he said Producer on the pitch Sam. as well. Yeah, not no me. And <laughs> I played um, in the cup final and they sent off the wrong person. I got three people got sent off, but the one who should have got sent off never. <laughs> um, playing uh, cup final against Arsenal and a boue. I used to do my head in. He used to kick me all the time and get away with murder. And oh, I just wanted to hit him. He used to frustrate me because I, I, you know, if I give him a little touch, he'd fall over and he always get a free kick. And then it kicked off near the end of the game. And it was handbags, really. But he's hit me on the back of the head. And I've, I'm not going to turn around and hit him because it's just, there's no, it never happens in football, really, a proper mm. scuffle. So I just went down. But it was like three seconds delay. If you get to watch it back, <laughs> it's like touch. Three seconds later, I go down. Did you, was there thinking time? Were you thinking, I'm going to go down, I'm going to go down? I'm thinking I'm going to get him sent off here, hopefully. Yeah, yeah that's what I was thinking. Yeah. And so then, acceptable, this, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's the only <laughs> thing I've ever got away with in football, I think. Um, and then I remember Marina running on the pitch and he's going, stay down, stay down. And I went, I will, I will. <laughs> and then um, I'm thinking, I'm yes, he's getting sent off here. I'm absolutely buzzing. And then they sent Adi Bio off instead of a Bue. Yeah. Oh, I couldn't believe Howard, it. And then he was Blair, laughing in my face yeah. as well. Is that Roger East again? No, 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 I don't Howard even Blair know who it was, to be honest. <laughs> but he was laughing in my face as well. And oh, it really, really bugged me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's off the pitch. Honestly, the player gets another yeah. one, Gary Neville. Yeah, Love yeah. Gary Neville 
off the pitch think he's really funny but to play against he used to really wind me up yeah, I get but that. that used to wind me up people, what you did it, I, that but I never do it that it's the only time I've ever done that's what winds me up no because when I used to like get fouled that's not even a dive though is it that's not a dive um and I used to get fouled and never get a free kick. I'm like, going to the ref, you should know that I'm one of them players that doesn't dive. Mm. I, d- I just don't dive. And that is the only time I've ever dived, I swear. And you're never going like to get Drogba. a foul after that. No, <laughs> you're no. never going to get a free kick. Um, though, the idea of the, of the dark arts and that, and that idea of conning the ref and, and playing the game in the less beautiful sense, that's something that you very much enjoy, that isn't it, that. John? <laughs> not conning the ref, nothing like that, but the dark arts. I used to yeah. like that against people just to wind people up. How many yeah. roles have you done? No, no never did that. No never did that. Never, never, never did that. That, that. that winds me up. If, you know, on a pitch, if you see people and they go down, because yeah. I always think... A bit like Drogba. Yeah, a bit like Drogba. If, you, if you're in the street and someone comes up to you and something happens, you never go down like that. I don't do it on a pitch. That's what I think. So if you were clipped in the area, you, you wouldn't... You Jamie Callagher tried to hug me once in the area, so I threw myself down and got a penalty once, but that was against Liverpool, so that's, accept- that's acceptable. So I, ne- so, so I never did it, except No, but when, when people like hold, yeah. hold like the really hair yeah. like in the face, or the you know when they go face to face and one of them falls over, that's because that doesn't happen, and that must that annoys fans as well. If you're watching, or if you're in the pub, or you're at home watching, and someone goes head to head and they fall over, that, that but do you know really I think that's, that's partly the point of it is to wind up. The player is it, one, no, it's to, to get, get sent off. No, it is, but it's also, but it's also off, if, they, it? if they then stay on. That if you if you play act all the way through, the, you played with Didier Drogba, and certainly, I mean, even more so at the beginning of his time at, at Chelsea, it would be lots of that thing, and, and part of it was to wind up the player he was playing against, wasn't it? Hundred percent. We mm. found it frustrating when we played with him, though, because he would literally dominate. You know, the ball goes up, so you could knock it up to him long. You know, he'd, he'd bully the defenders and bring it down. Except for but then fall over. Yeah. <laughs> as, soon as, as soon as he got touched, he'd fall <laughs> over. You could touch he? him a little bit, and then he'd be, he wouldn't like just go to the deck. He'd roll around on the floor, and we'd be like, oh, "We've got the free kick. Can you get up now? <laughs> you don't have to wait for a physio to come on and give you a magic sponge. Just get up." Mm. But there's one with Jens Lehmann, and it, he was just as bad as Didier. But I think Didier might have touched him first, and he's rolled around. <laughs> And then he's got up and confronted Didier and he's got closer and so Didier's rolling around but it happened like four times. It was like it was like a three minute boxing round of not really touching each other but rolling around like you've yeah. been knocked out. It's but I find it frustrating because yeah. I wasn't like that. I think the dark art though to the game are a bit different. It's like the stuff off the ball that no one sees. Yeah. And I, I, I sort of quite enjoyed that. I was a bit of a dick really on the pitch. I used to like it was always alright with me, I think. Just, was just I, on the yeah, pitch. Yeah. Yeah. People I used to like Pinch them all, yeah. stand on the feet. Yeah, Houthi was the best at Rob Houthi. So we had, we, yeah, we had we had Shane Long. Uh, every time we used to meet up at the island camp, he used to be like, "Rob Houthi is a fucking dick." <laughs> like every time I'm off and bruises, he's standing on my feet, asking what's wrong. He ignores me. Does it every single game we play against them. Um, so every international break, Shane Long saying this to me, and then uh, after <laughs> after the summer, they've been on holiday. Shane went on holiday, but was in the same place as Rob Huth and he came back and he said oh what a great lad he is <laughs> yeah. do you know what I mean like, what, 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 like an yeah. un- unbelievable top lad yeah. but just like on the pitch he's just the most annoying person but off the pitch it's just you know it, it's a complete opposite but I was the same he used to pinch people wind, wind them up or like when we interviewed him Van Dyke the other day he was one he used to do too at Southampton he used to try and get in his head because I'm not going to outrun him out muscle him he's a big lad so off the ball when he was running up say for corners and I was a striker so I was running back I would literally backpedal into him to try and like just to to really annoy him and that would Mm. annoy players because you know sort of win them in a way and then uh, then he'd have a go at me then I'd have a go and back and then he'd and then ignore him then I'd do it again then he'd try and foul me then I'd win a free kick fall over win a free kick and then uh I did it in the Holland game. We played the Netherlands for Ireland. We drew on one, and then when we interviewed him the other day, but he sort of you, you can tell when someone sort of laughs and then you shake hands and sort of that's part of the, that's part of the game. But with VAR, I don't know how that will work because if I did that and that got picked up, mm. I'd probably get sent off. Well, it's like the, um, the Dennis Irving one. I always remember that one with Nicky Butt. Yeah, and I think Dennis, uh, not Dennis Irving, Dennis Wise, sorry, has pinched him, Nicky Butt, and the reaction then. Oh, Nicky on the Butt, floor, wasn't yeah, it? it was so on the floor. Obviously, Nicky yeah. Butt jumps up. And <laughs> don't really That's do clever that. Though, and then, then yeah. why he goes down, he's laughing his head off, and but he gets sent off. Yeah. You know that's just it's that's well, what some of the lads do. It's smart, but at yeah. the same time, it's not right. 
um, because he's obviously committed the foul first but you, I, get, you get away with it don't you I see Ashley Barnes do it the weekend Ashley actually Barnes, he constantly. had a little fall with someone yeah. and I could see he's put his hand behind and done 100% so he's, he's done doing that yeah, yeah, you see the player react or just hold, them, just hold them so the defender can't get up and then when they, mm-hmm. they yeah, yeah. you moan at the ref they yeah. get booked yeah. you get away with it and it's not like falling over or anything but it's part of it mm. that's like the Burnley one Sean Dice goes on about it every weekend and said about this it annoys me Think he, he went on about in the Arsenal game about diving. Oh, you need to knock out dive, and, and there was no incident in the game that someone died for Arsenal. And he's saying, "Oh, yeah, the cheating." <laughs> he the says cheating. it's because he gets asked about it. Yeah. Because he gets well, asked about players overreacting every, after Barnes, every game. He says every game. Like I love Ashley. Like great lad, absolutely great lad. Sim- very similar to Charlie Adam in the game. Say it with a nail varnish. <laughs> <and how>. Very <laughs> similar. As soon as he gets touched, he falls over, or without getting touched, he falls over. So if your teams. Defend them for 10 minutes, which are, Burnley are a lot. They'll defend the edge of the box for 10 minutes, and you break out and you need a breather. He'll fall over and win a free kick, and everyone gets up the pitch. And then it's basically like a set piece, they'll launch it long. And he does it 10, 15, 20 times a game, diving. But is why it because do, but, it's further up the pitch but, that there but, isn't. But why, the high, why no, does he mo- that right? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Why does Sean Dyche moan about diving, but all the players diving it? And, but yet, yeah, Barnsley does it all the time to win free kicks and. Con and refs in a way, and like what we all did, sort of try and win free kicks, get a little nudge, fall over. It's never going to happen in real life, but in a football pitch, you get a free kick for it. And uh, he moans about it all the time, so it's a bit hypocritical, that, really. Again, for me. Isn't, isn't that the point of it? Is that you want all your players, when your players are doing it, and oh, it's all right, that's what I mean. It's hypocritical when your players are doing it and you win a free kick outside the box to get a chance. It's hypocritical, but everybody's hypocritical that way. But he makes a big thing, but what annoys me is making that much of a big thing about it. Yeah. Saying it should be take well, have a look at your own team first yeah. before you start moaning about everyone else doing it. Yeah, I was but saying to Wes earlier. I think England. Not that I'm saying it's right, but when we were playing for England back then, I think England needed a bit of nastiness about them and a we little bit more diving. We, we were, were honest, too honest. That's like the foreign players. Yeah. They get playing against foreign teams. You get that, don't you? You a lot of them dive, yeah, a lot of them. Semis, they you, so, you say they that, and yet the player you just up. talked about is Ashley Barnes. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I mean, technically, played, no. I know he's Austrian, but there's... <laughs> so, so when I play for Ireland, you, you come against a, yeah. any Eastern European team you come against that people don't think are very good, like a Georgia, and like Poland, or anyone like that, people don't think they're too good, but you come against them and they're all like six foot three, absolutely huge, really technically very good, strong as anything, will come right through the back here, but as soon as you touch them, they fall over and they get the free kick and... Foreign refs, European competitions, like you would have played a lot more than me. So you can't. You they always get the free kicks. Always. Yeah. But there's different. I've heard a couple of managers talk about this in terms of preparing teams for European referees. You almost have to play the game slightly differently because they'll pull you up for different things. Yeah, the manager sometimes will say to us, "Listen, if they've, if it's obvious, go down. Even if you feel um, that." You know, you can stay on your feet or whatever. You, you've got to play sort of to their game in in a way, so the ref does it for both teams. Because no matter which team you play, the um, foreign team, they would do it. Um, so you have to like sort of stick within their rules a little bit. Otherwise, the ref's just going to be on their side all day. You won't get a thing but just they, because you you know you're being honest. The and Italian teams, I thought, were amazing at it. Yeah, but yeah. it's just a rolling, play, yeah. just a rolling and. I mean, they're up, I, what, you see them rolling though. around, and if I was a ref, I'd be like, "I'll oh, get up, mate, will you?" <laughs> it's like, how do they see it? Like as a foul, it's yeah, just beyond me. For Chelsea, De- well, Arsenal now, but Chelsea, David Luiz was so yeah. good. Like, he yeah. was like brilliant. And I remember once uh, he he nearly broke my leg in a match against Chelsea, and uh, I went down and and I broke on the wing against him. I think we were drawing at the time, and I flicked it past him and ran down the wing, and he's literally. Missed the ball completely in two foot of me right in the shin. Mm. Literally, I thought, like, broke my leg, but jumped up, fuming, like, um, getting held off against him. But then, like, my leg was in bits, and now I think, I'm going to. It's the only play I've gone, I'm going to get you back. Like, <laughs> next time I play you. So, next time I play, next time we played at Stoke, I was desperate. Like, every time I went off the ball, Chasing I was like, I'm, and the lads, the Hoothy and Ryan were winding me up saying, Oh, you've got to get him in the match. So, I was like, Right, okay, put one up there first, header. So I went up first head and I'm thinking, right, I've got you now. And uh, he's gone for the header and I've tried to completely take him out. And he just jumped out the way, started <laughs> laughing at me. <laughs> Said all the game, I kept trying to get him and I couldn't get him. And after the match, I found it that funny. Yeah. that um, I was just like laughing with him in the end. Yeah. And it was, uh, it was a case of he's very good at it. He's very good in the tackle. He can take people out, but anything else, he'll fall over, win it. And he knows that side of the game. I think he's absolutely brilliant at it. Yeah. yeah. 
Did you did you used to do that? Like, were you good at that? The sort of dark art side of things. No, if I'm being honest, you've I, definitely died a few times. I haven't, you know. <laughs> no, I don't really get tackled. I mean, people would. I mean, I'm talking about full well, blown, full blown, <laughs> full yeah, blown okay. from tackle. I, I was happy with them, like you, you yeah, like yeah, them. Yeah. But in terms good, of they? diving, if you dived a few I, times, I, I think that probably much gets. Even if I've got fouled, I've got up straight away. Yeah, I'm like that. And you can That's probably the some team managers going, just slow down. You get me yellow. But you don't. You just get off. You just get off. That's your honesty in it. Yeah. I'm, yeah. You just weren't one of them that would just no, dive just around. get off and then try and get on with it. It was, was only you. It was only you that. No, I was, I was one of the honest players. That's why I used to get so frustrated with the ref when mm. things never went my way. Um, as we talked, though, it's probably probably the point of, of players doing it as well. <laughs> Listen, we've got time for one more topic. Yep. So you can choose which one you want. We can either talk agents in the light of the Bobby Duncan story we can talk about Kyle Walker being left out of the England squad and the worst reactions that you've ever seen from players who've been left out of squads or not been part of something you thought or we can do Eric Cantona post his <laughs> Wayne, Wayne's Different. eyes lit up I Wayne's do, I just eyes think Wayne might one. know a bit more of, mm, about well, Eric I've come across him he said I used to clean his boots and He's, he's turned up as I think. Yeah, it was looking like a homeless man. Yeah, <laughs> no, I love got, him now. He's born on I stage, and I'm you know thinking. What? But I think he's trained to be an actor, isn't he? he trained. So I, yeah. I don't think that's him. Be, I no, think it was that's King him. Lear. Put, that's he, him. He quoted King Lear. Yeah, that, but that's him putting the show on for me. Is oh, that, that, that's that's what that's what he's doing. That's him putting the show on. I thought he was becoming a poet or something. I didn't even know Shakespeare. He's an actor. I thought he was becoming a poet. Let's just be honest. Hardly anyone's recognised that. There'd probably be a few clever people like that, but not not us. He's a passionate guy, isn't he? He is, mate. I mean, listen. When we was at United, he was one of them guys that the aura he had. I mean, he'd walk into a room and everyone would shut up. And that is honestly the truth. The, I think it's what he did on the pitch at the time. Obviously, that, the short period that he was there, he just completely changed the football club, you know what I mean? And he's respected so much. But, I mean, I lost his boots once. <laughs> I didn't lose them. Someone's probably nicked him. And um, he's come into the room and he's like, Wesley, where's my boots? <laughs> and I'm thinking, you Welsh. <laughs> <laughs> Someone else has said that. I thought that was pretty good. I thought it was quite good. Cheers, mate. No, but uh, you ain't no mind. He's gonna like, do the speech like, in a minute. I'm like, I'm not, I mean, they're not there. I, I definitely cleaned them yesterday, and he's like, oh no, it's okay. But anyway, he walked through the corridor. Everyone had shut up. You know, every room he went into, everyone would be quiet, and he was such. You know, for, for that Man United at the time, he was such the biggest player. He's not mm. one of the biggest. That's probably stepped in and like took over the captaincy and did what he did for the club at the time to change it. Um, he's not the biggest and he, he's definitely one of them but he's a sort of character honestly you're just like in awe of him at all times did he have any funny mannerisms or like quirks or oh, anything he, like, he was pretty yeah. quiet I thought he was quiet he didn't did say much he didn't I played in a test Scolzi's testimonial yeah. did you play you played in that I don't think I did you in that I don't think not Scolzi's so he was manager of my yeah. team yeah um, and what was he like did he give you a, a <sighs> half time I didn't know where to, I didn't know where to put my head where to look like I was pretty like He's very passionate. Like I was, get, I mean. was getting bollocked by him. Oh, was he? I'm thinking <laughs> to myself, right, it's, a, it's a testimonial. I'm at Man City. I'm out of favour at the moment, so I get to go and play the game. Yeah. So I go and do a bit of training and stuff. Robbie Keane's there. Um, Patrick Vieira's there. They all went out the night before the game, and I, I just didn't fancy it. Mm. It's one of the nights I never went out. Um, and then in the game, fitting testimonies could be nice and relaxed and everything. Getting a change, he's going mental at me because I've not made twenty overlaps, I've not put twelve crosses in, I've not done this, and like he was just going mental at everyone. You don't I know what just it was a testimonial, and it was like he was so passionate about the game yeah, and yeah. people not doing this and not doing that, and how much he loved football. Yeah, it was just crazy. He was di- listen, he was different, mm. but I'm guessing in the right way for the club. Do you remember the first time you met him? Yeah, he didn't say much. Um, again, I, I would he, his boots would be there. I would go and get him, leave him back on his peg, make sure they were shiny. Was he picky about his boots? No, he always wore the same ones. Night tempos, I think they were at the time. Uh, nothing special. That's one thing that doesn't go on anymore, is it? The boots? No, no, they're not allowed. Kids don't do the boots. Child, uh, yeah. is it something to do with child protection yeah, or something? Like the two young. Like, that was it. British. That, it's a young lad coming through. You, it's the best you get not. a bonus off them at Christmas yeah. or. They give you money per week. And How much did you get thing, off Eric? Yeah. I didn't get anything. Did <laughs> <laughs> no. I, guess I, I, I didn't get anything. would be a big hitter as well. No, Chucky was uh, the best um, tipper, and I wasn't on Chucky's. No. I was Blind McClare. Yeah. 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 He was the best tipper. Um, I, was, you know, cause I was just thinking, if you, if you go in as a, as a young kid who's been at the club and you get Eric Cantona's boots, is, it, is there, a, is there a, a, a hierarchy, though? Is there a sort of... No, if you get all. a good player, you're like... I think you're, you're probably thinking... 
I was a kid I was at the time he's one of the bigger players he's got more money he's going to give me more shit <laughs> I'm, I'm happy with as, like, as a young lad when you're earning £47 <laughs> pound, you're thinking he's on a big contract he's going to give me a big tip yeah. Yeah, I mean, at the time, like when the lads were, when the first team were tipping the lads, I mean, I would never ask him for it. Do you know what I mean? No. You just, it's one of them. You hope someone has. Um, You'd someone hope one of the that's, senior that's players would say to you, you haven't given like, Wes was, any money yeah. for cleaning your yeah. boots. Yeah. So no, he might not ask, even known about it. It wasn't a thing. The kit, yeah. 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 kit men clean up now. Kit men. Yeah, kit men clean so the, everything. So, especially Premier League as players, you don't really have to clean your boots. You leave them, and the kit men will like do twenty-five pairs of boots, but would expect the lads uh, maybe pay them so much per week and they probably double treble the wages from the lads giving yeah. them money each week or the Alaska Christmas you got them I've been cleaning your boots Christmas all uh, morning, thing, but which is fair enough if yeah. they've been working for you <laughs> it's only yeah, fair yeah. If you, it's a shame that's a job kit, though, isn't it, it? The what, kitman? Kitman. <laughs> That's a job. They're, they're employed by the company. Cleaning the boots was never their job, was it? Because it but, used to. That but used I didn't to be like the mask. You yeah. just give it to them anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming in to join us. Are you, ba- are you back in with us at some stage? Yeah, it might even be next week. Perfect. We'll see you yeah. next week. You're. Oh, you are, are you on holiday again? Kind again. of. No. We no. Kind of. No. I'm away in Utah doing a little bit of work and then. I'm on holiday. Well, it's a stag do. I've got to go. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'll be back you, just after yeah. that. Yeah. I might it, it's a, a li- chore. It's a chore. Yeah, isn't might it? have a beer that day to take the edge off. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. John will keep you one of his Guinnesses. <laughs> yeah, you, you, back can next week? Next, you can have yeah. one next time. You back next week, John? I'm back next week. Yeah. Perfect. Holiday's we'll make, over. We'll let you all come fully clothed next week as well. <laughs> for my benefit as much as anyone else's. Well, the votes have been counted and we have a winner in the Paddy Power Challenge. But is it? Wes Brown's cowboy? Is it Wayne Bridges' <laughs> dentist chair? Or is it John Walters who doubled up with the pig's head I and, the, two. And, the kissing, and the kissing himself? Or pretending to kiss himself? Guess which one it is that won? It's one of yours, but it's not the pig's head. It's the <laughs> one. You didn't paint your nails in vain. <laughs> oh, no. Well, it was worth the effort, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it was worth, worth the all the effort. That is Am the I one that's you know, the Kelly? Am I, I think you should. Yeah. What do you think? You might need to grow your nails a bit. You haven't really got much space in there. Because yeah. if you grow them longer, you can get, like, patterns put on them and all kinds of things. I'm not about that. Right, <laughs> <so>. <laughs> just, just go basics at the moment. <laughs> Beginner nails. Um, so you've already got £250 then just for winning. And you have a £250 bet. Nobody has won a bet yet. So what are you going to go for this week? I'm going hard again. <laughs> Republic of Ireland versus Switzerland. Okay. Uh, 13 to 5. They are with Paddy Power. So uh, I think it's a good bet. No Shakiri, I think, for Switzerland. Mm-hmm. Ireland, if they weren't near enough guarantees, qualification for them. So big home game coming up. Um, go my heart. And that goes to which charity? Um, fan support and food banks. Okay. So yeah. So fingers crossed. That is it for this week's Liquid Football from Joe together with Paddy Power. We're here every week. You can download the podcast or watch us on YouTube. Please do leave us a review on iTunes, a nice one, if you wouldn't mind. And we've also got a Facebook page. So if you want to join in the chat, you can go there. And remember, House of Rugby with James Haskell and Adebayoak and Fenwa is tomorrow, as, um, as well as TKO. Andre Ward joins Carl Frampton and Chris Lloyd. That's on Wednesday. And we will be back. Some of us will be back next week. Thanks for listening. You've been watching Liquid Football on Joe, sponsored by Paddy Power.